<laughs> All right, hello everyone. Welcome to this first round match of the Pepe Cuenca Divis Invitational. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm, I'm happy to be joined by a long-time childhood friend uh, that you guys all know on Chess24, LeFong Hua. Uh, LeFong, welcome. How's it going today? Very good. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for uh, having me. And uh, it is a first time for me doing commentary ever. So it is an honor to, uh, to do this with you. Yeah, you've been doing the banter blitzes. I heard that yesterday you, uh, you uh, got to 3200, I think, during your banter blitz. Is that right? Yes, uh, very inflated rating, and uh, all the other banter blitzers are coming at me now. Oh, so uh, yeah, yeah, I already yeah, got some match requests from uh, Laurent. You're challenged by Laurent Fressinet soon. Can't avoid him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this has been a fun tournament so far. I don't know if you've had a chance to, to watch some of the other matches, but there was a, a very, very close match. Svidler against uh, Svidler this morning. Svidler, I guess, pulled the win. I, I was listening to the stream for... for for many, for quite a while actually, and I guess it okay. it finished seven yeah, six. No, I, I missed the end of it because awesome. I have to get a little bit of food before uh before doing a commentary here. But uh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I haven't been following too much um, because I was just uh, doing some other banter blitz and I was not really involved with the the commentary. So I had to cut up a little bit. Saw the results and uh, super excited about the match today. All right. Um, so. We should give a little bit of history, I guess. So we've we've known each other. We've known each other. We're both originally from Montreal. I don't. I, obviously, we've never done a, a stream together, but uh, you know, we're about the same age. I guess I'm a tiny bit younger than you, and uh, you know, we. I guess we've known each other since I was maybe five or six, right? Exactly. We were uh, playing those uh, scholastic tournaments, and. Uh, it was a good thing for me that I was actually not in the same year as you. Otherwise, I would have lost uh, all the provincials and uh, not even get a chance to go to nationals. I don't. I don't think I don't, that's actually, actually. I don't think that's actually true. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's no, actually true. No, I think, true, I think but, we were around the, oh, the so same level for a while. They're they're playing here, so they this. I'm actually going to go back and go through really quickly what they played. Uh, they started with, I guess, a quiet opening here. Um, the famous London. Yeah, well, it's actually it's the Torre, right? The Torre attack. Sorry. Right, so he put yeah. his bishop. He put his bishop on g5 instead of the uh, more common f4. Actually, when we were yes. kids, I think they put the bishop on g5, and now bishop f4. After Magnus and others like Kamsky and some other players started playing it. Um, For sure. This is uh, actually they're they're moving really fast uh, early on. I wonder if uh, so. Now I think I'm live. Uh, yeah, so, we're, we are live. Actually, I was only looking at the current position and I was assuming a London because everyone uh, plays it. But now that I've replayed the moves, effectively it was a bishop on g5. So. <laughs> yeah, I have to imagine this is a this is an okay position for black. It doesn't look doesn't look too scary, um, but he does have to watch. I guess he does have to be a little bit a little bit careful. Can they yeah. ca can they castle here? I mean, I guess white wants to play d5. Yeah. So I guess castling is okay. Oh, actually, DC5 I just five and now I just saw a trick. I think castles loses or maybe close to loses because he can play pawn takes c five, and, and bishop, bishop c five. Yeah, and then b four, and I don't know where the bishop can go. Wow, so, that's really nice. Uh, and and then blitz. It is so easy to fall for that because uh, castling is such a natural move here. Yeah, I'm guessing that he saw it because he spent so much time. You know, like if you castle, if you pre move castle, then you would you would of course. Uh, end up very upset. So he plays For G5. Sure. G5 is kind of a crazy... I don't. You don't really see G5 in the London system too much. Exactly. And uh, I, I think talking about pre-moves, uh, because that's kind of my specialty, uh, 3 plus 2, we, we, we need to tell people that uh, it's very different from 3-0. Oh, I'm not expecting a lot of pre-moves in, in this match. And even in time scrambles, you're always looking for the, for the best or at least the second best move. Um, we, we don't see a lot of... Uh, of flags and stuff. So three plus two, uh, definitely more of a serious uh, time control. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting. You're you're absolutely right. And in the match between Svidler and Vidit, it seemed like Vidit was always down like a minute on the clock, but he still managed to do okay. I mean, he lost the match, but it was very very close. And but since we're talking about pre moves, uh, I think yesterday. I mean, I don't know if it's confirmed, but Rajabov made a move in the opening um, that definitely looked like it was a. Um, Definitely looked like it was a um, a mouse slip. Like you know, 
He played knight e5, giving a giving a pawn, and he ended up actually with a decent position. Mm -hmm. So this game got crazy. Now g5, he played d5. Yeah. I mean, it looked to me like bishop g3 was just going to be better for white, um, and maybe this yeah, is much does. better for white. I I don't really know. Um, that's but, out of control right now. Yeah, this so. is just. Um, so he can't take on e6, I guess, because queen takes d6. He has to move the knight. Yeah, agree, I agree. He has to where, move the knight, but the question is, where does he where does he put his knight? Um, yeah, so he, he probably wants to put it somewhere, like, not e5, so that he has bishop takes h2 ideas. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know where. I mean, f6, f8, b8. This is crazy. I have some ideas with e7 if you move your knight. So bishop h2 fails to uh, me taking the rook with the pawn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so is he gonna? Uh, yeah, that's that, that's that's true. Really so messy. E seven, E seven, like you said, and if he plays bishop takes h two, just king takes h two, and if rook takes d one, then you can make a queen. No, uh, no, no. E seven. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's a double check. Whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I uh, rusty here. No, or no. Even... I mean, it, it, but that your variation is good. I, it looks like it's probably winning after just uh, king takes h two, rook takes d one. And then you can actually even take the rook on d1, completely winning, or play e8, rook d8, and also completely winning, I guess. So, probably. Yes. So. Or even, can I even play something like uh, just queen e2, g takes h4, e7? Queen e2 looks like a good move, yeah. I mean, in e7, the thing is, bishop takes h2 would be a blunder, right? So he would have to play like bishop takes e7, and then queen e2. Wow. So that, it's actually the same position, it's the same thing. As queen e2, g h4. Except, except black here has an option to not take the bishop. Yeah, so he could move, he could play bishop f6 or bishop d6. Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it still seems but, but like then, white, yeah. white has a nice, very nice position though, right? The king, the king is, the king is much safer and the knight For will sure. have a good square on e5. I, I think bishop d6 was much better than bishop f6 because bishop f6, bishop g3, and then the right. king is really uh, not safe. Yeah. But here, yeah, white should start attacking the king, maybe. Yeah. A4, A4, B4. A5, yeah, I, I like that plan. Whoops. We are really spoiled with this uh, first game. Like, uh, it's not yeah, always... They, they, they're, uh, playing some, but, uh, they're playing some nice, crazy tactics. Um, this is going to be an interesting match. I think, for most people, Duda is probably a little bit of a favorite. You know, he's, he's really been on an upswing. He's a young guy. I think Magnus yeah. Carlson has said good things about his play. Uh, yes. But Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna is a good, he's a good player. Like he's won some real tournaments. He's a, he's a good player too, and he's very, and he's very solid. So definitely. And and here the time situation, a minute to twenty five seconds. Usually in a three zero game is really bad for Black. But as long as Black has a playable position, he can always come back from it because he in three plus two you can definitely gain time every uh, every time you make a move. So it's not that convincing as a time lead. Yeah, it's true. And, and in this hand control, players often uh, let their time drop too close to uh, 10 or 5 seconds and they play on increment. Uh, some players are very good with that. Yeah. <laughs> I personally would freak out. But, uh, like uh, Grish, Grishuk, who joined Grishuk. us in the stream earlier, uh, yes. he, he was, people were making fun of him because he was very late. So just like he's late when he makes moves. Yes. Uh, but actually, this, this position got, got worse, I think, for Black. I mean, it oh, was yeah. already worse, but now it's, I think it might be getting to a difficult uh, level. It looks so tough to play for, for black, especially with 12 seconds in your clock, finding those precise defensive moves. Yeah. Uh, Maybe, and you know, engine evaluation go, here he doesn't mean the, much. Uh, he went for the queen against rook position, which I'm a little bit surprised because I thought white might have better than that. This one looks like maybe it's drawish. Yeah, actually, I couldn't take on b5, so now he's going for f7. Rook f6, maybe? Yeah. Rook f6. But rook f6, king a5. Maybe it's not totally clear. G4 now to play rook f5, maybe? Cause that, I mean, black's only counterplay is to push their b-pawn. I don't, I don't see yeah. anything else. I mean, white is no not in danger at all here. Well, now rook king b7. b2. King b2, maybe? But, and then but the b2, thing oh, is, king b2, now... King a5. Yeah, that, that, that still is a difficult, very difficult. Rook a5 now. Why, why can't afford trading those two rooks for the, the pawn and the queen now? They have a 3 and 2, 3 versus 2 on the king side. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why he didn't play rook a5. I, I like rook a5 trying to take the pawn. Yeah. Now, now he rook would have had 
King C4. And the main point here for white is that if I actually win the pawn on B4, I want to make sure that my king is safe and that there's no perpet. So yeah, yeah. G4. It still is not, you know, <laughs> this reminds me of the game that Rajabov had um, in early in the tournament that finished the match against David Anton, where he was just mm -hmm. winning. Um, and then the queen, the queen somehow picks up a rook, you know, like it's just, it's easier yeah. to play with the queen sometimes when you have no time and it's just like make automatic moves. Yeah, so here the issue for white is that uh, the f2 pawn is pretty weak and it is really hard to go for the b pawn without letting go of that pawn on yeah, f2. Yeah. It's true. I think, you know, Hare Krishna might want to uh, be careful and not make sure not to lose because it would be really a devastating uh, loss. Oh, for sure. For sure. Is he going to go for a draw? And remember, if I if I so, play queen d5 and I pin your rook, uh, you, you can't have getting, a position. Now it's getting wild, right? Like he's got, once he lets the pawn come to b2, it's it's anybody's uh, game. Oh, for sure. Oh my god, he went for it. He took the a pawn. And now, wait a sec, this is really messy. He wants yeah. to take on c1 and play a7, but does yeah. it really maybe work? He, maybe he's got a, maybe he's just playing for a fortress now. Oh, he plays a7 No, oh, queen first. b7 and queen f2, queen f3, and I, I take the rook? No, but, this is, uh, I mean, wow. So now he has rook a7 and he picks up both. No, he only picks up one because he can play king b2. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now white is probably, now white should be completely winning because. I, I think it is completely winning here. You have to avoid both mate and yeah. losing your points on the king side. Yeah, so this is going to be winning, but what a crazy, this has been a crazy, crazy first game. For sure, for sure. And it's still not it's still not actually trivial now that he get now his king is out of trouble. So White has to grind this down and somehow win the pawns. I mean his king is not actually out of trouble, but it's it's not getting mated right away. I mean, unless White blunders a rook, I don't see how White can lose here. Oh, whoa, G four. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, well now <laughs> <laughs> Just when I said White can't lose, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. okay wow. Was, what a game. Wow. What a game. This was this was a this was a crazy one. All right. I didn't even have time to sip my coffee, and uh, they're going at it. It's uh, it's really really wild, and uh, we have a very active chat here. So I'd like to say hi to everyone on on Twitch and on Chess Twenty Four. Uh, we got some people who don't even know who I am. <laughs> so uh, well that. Yes, we we got some uh, some people on Twitch asking like who's commentating. And I well, guess... Uh, yeah, so we should introduce you again, I guess. It's it's always easier to... Uh, actually, I should uh, I should follow their game here. Sorry about that. Uh, where is it? Sorry, some uh, Pascal... Wait, is is the game going to pop up uh, automatically? Or no, do we I have... I got a... Sorry. But I don't think they have started yet, right? Oh, maybe not. That's Maybe that is why. Okay. Okay, All so right. there we go. So, wow, there really no breaks, right? They just go at it. Like. They just go at it. Yeah, they're supposed to wait maybe 30 seconds or so. Uh, and I'm just I'm trying to add the score so that uh, you guys can see it. Obviously, it's, it's a, a half to half right now. Yeah. And just to, to remind people who might not be uh, familiar with our format, um, the uh, it's the first the first two six and a half uh, wins, so yes. All right, so they they're playing now. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so this game is uh, I would say more peaceful than the last one for now. Yeah, so this started as a, as an Italian, and sorry that I missed the I missed the beginning. I might actually follow. I'm gonna follow it in a different way uh, from now on. I'm following in the in the main uh, main page. I see a very active Chess Twenty Four chat. Yeah, I yes. see uh, some faithful fans for from my Bentry Blitz. Eminent loss for you. Always uh, always here. So that's good that he's tuning in. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we we have a lot of uh, of names actually. Uh, you told me that this show attracts a lot of viewers, so it's good to see a lot of new faces. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and. Uh, so, so uh, someone um, is asking in the YouTube chat, and by the way, you should subscribe to our YouTube channel, you know, youtube.com slash chess24. Um, 
it's nice to build that subscriber base. Uh, this is the first to six and a half. And if it's yeah. six six, then they play sort of sudden death. So the first person to win uh, wins the match. And the time controlled is three two. Um, and the first game was a crazy, crazy first game where I guess Hare Krishna had chances for most of it, or at least for yeah. the longest time. Uh, now they have a, a, a more quiet position, but it could get it could get interesting. Queen c6, he's offering a queen trade here. Um, and on queen takes, I guess he's... Can he take? I guess he can take with he a knight. Oh, you don't have d5. I had knight yeah. d5. Yeah, okay, so he can so. take with either piece. Mm -hmm. Actually looks pretty yeah. comfortable for black, right? Uh, I mean, it's actually I, a very strong move, because if you move your queen, you might lose one of the two pawns on a4 or e4. Yeah, I think he's so, got. I think he's got a trade, and then. But, uh, the but then he's, yeah, he's, he's losing. He seems to be losing a pawn there. So, uh, the d4 pawn, because there's going to be two pawns attacked, and like uh, like Lafonk said, on d5, there's knight takes d5. So. Um, and if you take the queen, knight takes b4 and d4 are attacked. So you can go bishop b2. I might be able to play knight takes b4. But if you go bishop e3, e4 is hanging. So it's a hard, posi tough position for white, yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. And that's why he's kind of tanking, right? He's already been thinking. He's, he's down to one minute versus two, over two minutes. So he's got a over a minute advantage here. And um, yes. so, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I think it's a tough start for for Duda, who uh, a lot of people put as a as a favorite. And I personally uh, am rooting. No, I, I cannot say I'm rooting for someone, right? Am I allowed to say that as a commentator, or am I supposed to remain neutral? <laughs> no, you can. You know, you can take sides. I mean, we've seen Jan. Jan is always taking sides or making fun of somebody, right. whether it's Lawrence Trent or or uh, <laughs> Laurent Fressinet. Um So yes. you know that that's fine. The only thing is that you, oh, you gotta you gotta oh. remember it. So it's, I just saw a bunch of moves happen here. Yeah, me too. So I think there was a... Maybe he wasn't tanking after all. Maybe uh, he made some moves and there was a, a delay or something. But now we get a position with two pieces for Rook. Although the bishop on c1 is pinned. And this is quite unpleasant. How do you get out of this? You have to play something like Rook a1 and bishop b2? Yeah, I mean, it's, this is not... This is unpleasant. I think it might just be losing actually for for white. Like, that, I mean, it, this it's, is way too many pawns. So if you go yeah. rook a one, uh, maybe just uh, rook b eight or something. Rook b eight, uh, bishop yeah. b two. I'm gonna Why trade rooks. Pick up that pawn. It's it's actually it's black to move still, right? I mean, he can play he can play rook b eight, or yeah. Okay, so he there might be some delays. There might be some delays in the game. Uh, yeah, gonna, but I think I think I'm gonna follow it in a different way uh, after this game. So. Um, so yeah, a5, is, uh, b5, king h7 played. Wow, a weird move. I don't know why. I guess oh, because a5, of the check. a5 might have been a blunder. Um, yeah, but, but king white, h7. Actually, you can play, you can still play rook a5, bishop d2, take on b1, bishop takes a5, like rook a1 or something. I don't know. That gets com complicated though. Yeah, but then I take on c7. I think you need two pawns. Uh, yeah. if you if you lose c7 and d6. I think the bishop and the knight combination can neutralize the pawn on c6. So I think black is looking for a way to uh, at least keep two pawns, two protected pass pawns. And I don't think the, the white pawn are, are so yeah, dangerous not, right he's now. He's not, he's not going anywhere for now. But he can start, uh, I guess he can start move, moving his knight, um, like knight e3 to play knight c, try, trying to play knight c2. Mm hmm. Okay. So now black he's going to have two pawns. He's going to have, he can play rook a1. Take on c7, take on a4, and he's got the two connected. So it's, he's still got good winning, very good winning chances. But it might not be so easy because the king is close. So yeah, I, I, I like d4 here because uh, black doesn't want to get blockaded on the dark squares since uh, we have a dark square bishop. And knight c4, okay. So now it comes uh, comes down to calculation, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. With, uh, and it's th not, that's uh, really tough. That's really tough because. Uh, I mean, black is doing well, and uh, he has a minute on his clock, whereas white has to find very, like, yeah, amazing defenses in less than. Yeah, I agree. This is this is probably this is in deep. practice. This has got to be lost. Yeah. Should I should I bring the the black king to help, or is the rook and two pawns enough to win this? Rook c2 and c4. Can yeah, can white do anything about it? I think rook c2 is a very strong move, and there the pawn gets to c3 by force. Uh, that's got to be got to be losing. That's really tough, yeah. 
Yeah, see, Once my pawn gets to... Okay, he decides... He's actually decided to just bring his king, maybe. Maybe he's just going to play king g6, king f5. Uh, no, he's going this, to, is, yeah. this is lost no, almost no C4. matter what. Uh, no matter what he Bishop does, he's just lost. I can just bring the king. Or I like rook c2 and c3. Yeah, I don't have an issue with it. Rook c2 was good there. Um, he can't fall for king f5, knight d4. So now c3, <laughs> I guess. Check, check on c3? Yeah. yeah. Just... And not d2, because I'm going to play knight takes d2. Right? Yeah, c2, c2 first, and then that should do it with rook d1. Wow. Right? So, good start for, for Hare Krishna here with... Uh, Very good start, indeed. And so, um, let's try to pull the game out before, uh, <laughs> before we miss the opening. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so, I'm actually going to do this in a slightly different way now. Okay. Uh... Hopefully, okay. So they started. They started incredibly quickly. I'm sorry, my board is now not quite, uh, not quite right. I'm going to change my screen grab here. Sorry about that. Um, so, do you need to refresh the page every time? Like, m maybe you can. We should tell the chat how to, uh, how to get the game because I see it on your screen, but on my screen, it's still not yeah, refreshed. And I, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that as soon as I get my. Uh, I just want to first fix the the board so that people can actually see it, because right now. All right, so I got the new game. Yeah, now it's a now it's a London. <laughs> now it is a London, yes. He adjusted his uh, strategy, although uh, the first game he had a really nice game. So very good start for uh, Mr. Harry Krishna. So now a little weakness on a6. He's gonna try to uh, put pressure. Knight d5 played, and could I trade queens and just, uh, yeah, trading queens, putting pressure, knight c4 here, possibly with the idea of going knight a5. And I'm sorry, and, guys, uh, I'm still just trying to fix my screen so that uh, we can, and I'm just about. Uh, yes. So. All right, knight a5 played. Uh, now, am I going to, it's painful, but I might have to give up my, my bishop, rook a b8. Now, I certainly don't want to exchange the B and A pawn. I'm trying to keep the B pawn while winning the A pawn in the ideal situation. So maybe a move like uh, B3. Okay, here. Yeah, Rook FB1. I'm expecting Rook B8. I can't be passive here with black. So Rook B8 to attack the B pawn. And uh, Rook A6, Rook B2. There are some back rank issues for both sides. And uh, Duda is carefully calculating everything right now. All right, I'm going to start talking a lot more in just a second here. Yeah, no worries. I'm. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you've got you've got this. You've got I'm this doing my best as a as a 3200 on chess 24 here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's the spirit. Yeah, so rook fb8 played. Now, can I take on a6? Rook b2, rook takes, rook takes. Rook a8, there's a back rank mate. So rook a6, there was maybe knight c3, though. So bishop a6, now I think black can safely take that pawn. Oh. I, don't see, uh, I don't see an issue with that. And, now this and I think this is very equal. Yeah, it looks like a boring position, so... <laughs> yeah, but, but I think white missed something, because uh, white had a lot of pressure on the a6 pawn. I'm not sure about trading the knight versus the bishop on b7. I feel that after this, the b pawn is very weak. And now black should have no trouble uh, just getting out of this. I mean, yeah. I mean, if anything, if anything, it might be a little bit easier for black. I mean, I guess it's just equal yeah. actually. <laughs> um, but all pawns on one side, the bishop is not as good as before. Yeah. So now I'm expecting the four rooks to be traded, and uh, I don't know if it's common practice in the in the blitz match to offer a draw here. Do, do they mostly just uh, uh, because? I Right, I, I feel the classical game. They, they would keep, just offer a draw here. Yeah, but I think they keep playing. Especially I, if I were black and I just lost the last game here, I would try to play here. I, I don't yeah. think black risks really anything. Mhm. Mm Ninety four, you know, and just. Uh, I mean, of course, it's 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 equal, but um, I guess. Black has a root on B two. We never know with knight e4, f2 might be weak. Yeah, I mean, if he has to play like bishop e4, knight e4, rook f1, and then you can start to play like, I don't know, f5, g5, and just, 
I don't think black is really ever risking anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think as soon as uh, rooks are traded, then we can conclude that it's going to be a draw for the sure. Thing, and I know you're, uh, you're very good in blitz. Like, whenever people take too much time, I'm like, no, no, like, don't fall behind. Because I see, I've watched all these Magnus Carlsen <laughs> matches and Firuja, and, you know, they're almost never behind on time. I know, like you were saying, that 3-2 is a little bit different from, it's, I mean, it's very different from 3-0. But still, yes. you know, it's going to be hard to play accurately with 20 seconds on his clock. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but, but Duda is the one who has a rook on B2, so he kind of has control of uh, whether he wants to just play it safe and make a draw or try to push it. But with the low amount of time on his clock, uh, I would consider just playing it safe here. He can't afford to, uh, to just lose this game right now because uh, he, oh, needs yeah. to, uh, he needs to fight back. And uh, do we have some moves here? Okay. Yeah, so you 92. finally played rook. Uh, you finally yes. played ninety-two. But who would have thought that this would be the move that he spends a minute and twelve seconds on? Uh, True. True. But of course, his position is is okay, and ninety-two was was a good move. Yes. So now we'll do that. It's trade rooks. He he's pushing it. He's playing rook a two. He wants to keep rooks on the board. Yeah. I guess and, uh, not playing solidly though. Rook. Uh, that move was good. And Are we going to see a repetition here? Try. Even though he's got no time, he's going to try. Rookie two, rookie one. Okay, he's he's going for it. Yeah. I, uh, so, I like it. I like it. Yeah, like White has to be a little careful. White, if they move their rook, there's rook a two on most, like rook d one or rook c one. There's rook a two. Yeah. So it is slightly unpleasant. Um, yeah, I just don't know why he's taking so long. Like I feel like you can play king g seven or g five without yeah. spending any time. So here, as uh, as white, I think the second rank is more dangerous than the than the first one. Maybe rookie two and knight d two just to try to trade those knights yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah, like now. But knight d two now. Knight d two, knight d two, rook a one, and if king g two, rook a two, and you lose a something. Wow, this is really. So it's actually it's actually quite tricky. The only thing is he's got really no time. That position might be a draw, like rook a2, the, that knight d2 line, because you could take on e4 and then take on g5 maybe. I don't know. So I think I have to go g4. I can't allow g4. It's way too passive. And uh, g4, if you take, I take back. I can always defend with knight h2 if my g4 pawn is hanging. And Because uh, otherwise, is there even a, a good move for, for white? If I go something like rook c2 or rook b2, Rook a1 check, and my king is I kind of in the mating I think he might have missed some live moves. I'm not sure. Now, okay, I got it now. Yeah. yeah. Knight h2. Now, I guess he doesn't have knight g4 because the g3 pawn is hanging if he plays f3. Right. Uh, right. But, I mean, the, the rook is uh, defending the pawn here. Uh, it's not going anywhere. I can just play maybe uh, a rook move. Okay, knight f1, very solid move. Rook f5, they might repeat here. Oh, okay. wow. King g7 Duda is tricky. Seven seconds is going for it. Yeah. That's amazing. He is not Oh, rook d6, knight e4. Yeah. So now he wants to probably bring his king to g5 as a start. It's just amazing, though. He's playing with, like, no time at all. Mm -hmm. And he's still trying to win. I mean, he, he could very possibly flag. Uh, yeah. Because now I don't know what his plan is. Like, he can't play knight e4 because of rook g8. So what is he? Mm -hmm. He's not actually trying to really do very much. So he's really risking losing. Yes, but do you think the match situation uh, is uh, the reason why he's trying to uh, to win this game? I mean, like maybe, he's maybe, but he's black. You know, he gets white next game. He's only he's only down one and a half to half. It's so early. Yes. And now I think Harry Krishna is trying to win because <laughs> I think <laughs> maybe F4 maybe is just a, F4 is just like a, a winning attempt. I mean, he's not. There's no reason for that move. You know. And again, this is how 3 plus 2 is so different from 3. Oh, you know, like with 20 yeah. or 25 seconds, Duda would take a draw in a heartbeat in a 3-0 game. But here, he might be comfortable with 4 seconds on his clock. He might, uh, you know, he might just say, well, I'm going to make a move every 2 seconds. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, and so now, ah, so it might actually be, now king d6, rook d7 is mate. Um, so this yeah. might actually finally be a draw. Yeah. Looks he's, like he can't run to d8. Yeah. There's knight f7 check, so yeah, he has to so stay is, there. Wow. And he can't go to d6. He gets mated, so, so he right. has to. So 
What a nice game. Nice game, yeah. Good fighting spirit from both players. I think they both decided to to try to win, so. Yeah. All right, I just updated the score, so now it's 2-1 for Hare Krishna, who, uh, you know, really could have won both both of the first two games, so a good start for him. Uh, for sure. But it's, you know, anything can happen in, in something like this. I think He Blitz was being is, pressed is, uh, a little bit, but, uh, I mean, he did a great job. All right, so do we have the same opening as two games ago? I think so, right? It looks it looks very much similar. And this was also played um, a little bit yesterday in the Rajabov match as well. Mm -hmm. So the Italian is like the most popular uh, opening, I guess. In days. your opinion, how much do those uh, players prep for blitz match? Do Do you That's think a they? That's question. They I th I think uh, I think you know for for something like this probably a. Uh, a little bit but you know you, you also got to keep in mind that it, like the opening is um, I mean I feel like in blitz matches people can play almost any opening you know mm -hmm. um, but yesterday yesterday Rajabov and uh, David Anton uh, played the same opening you know 10 games <laughs> like pretty much it was just like an opening battle in one line um, well so. th this seems to be the trend right now as well I mean um... Hare Krishna switched it up a little bit, but it is still remaining in the same structures. And now yeah. Duda as white uh, is going for the same opening. Yeah. But he has a nice game. Yeah, I I guess white maybe can claim a, a very slight advantage, but it looks it looks okay for black. Um, for sure. You know, white white has a little bit of of uh, one of the advantages is that you can play a takes b five at any point. And black can't really play B takes A4 too easily. So, exactly. So that's like flexibility that makes the position much easier to play. Yes. So a common strategy here in those kind of uh, of battles of the A file is that you double your rooks first and then you take on B5 just to right. make sure that you, you gain control of that file. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's see what, uh, what yeah, white has eight, in mind. Queen E8, a bit of a mysterious, mysterious move. He's defending e5. He's uh, yeah, keeping a knight on b5. Yeah, he might be preparing rook d8, you know, and, and say that you can take the a file, but you won't take mm -hmm. anything on it. <laughs> um, like maybe now he can maybe play rook d8. So this is a really nice maneuver, actually, just to ignore yeah. the a file and claim that white has nothing, even yeah, though the infiltrate. Queen e8 looks weird, but he couldn't play queen e7 because he needed the queen to continue to defend the rook on a8. So, yes. Yeah. So it's inter it's and interesting. I'm pretty sure that this is an idea that he already had it prepped or in mind. It's not something he just came up with, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, and, and they must have looked, this kind of position now, you know, for these guys that play the Italian is probably something they, you know, they've studied pretty deeply, so. So what does White do here? It's a bit of a, you know, it's like, a, it actually looks like Black is okay now. I mean, their their pieces are very active and basically a symmetrical structure so it looks fine for black and again is you know look at, the, look at the time <laughs> like yes Har Hare Krishna has two and a half minutes <laughs> he plays fast and this has been the case in I think every game like he's up on time I was wondering earlier if d4 was a ever a threat because b4 was hanging but it seems like uh he decided to take on on e4 now 97 so it's the battle of the files Yep, Battle of the Files is right. Um, so, has Duda been down on time every single game? I I think so. I mean, the, the freshness in my memory is obviously the last game, and I can't really remember too much too much after one game, but uh, I think so. So, what is Duda going to do here? I think he needs to find a nice squares for his knight. Did he do that? Yeah, I don't know. Um, he needs to figure uh, out where he have to put his rooks. Because everything is everything is fine, but I don't know what his plan is. You know, like he maybe just rook d one or yeah, he'd make some move that trades pieces. I don't know. I guess so. He plays rook a five, keeps an eye on the b pawn. Mm -hmm. um, he's taking so much time though. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe he's it's comfortable true. with that, but uh, this is this is crazy to be down almost two minutes here. In the yeah, plus two. yeah. I mean, I guess it's a it's a solid position. He's not necessarily going to need too much time, but start you know stuff starts to be attacked, and 
So now he's got to be a little careful that E-pawn uh, is attacked. And knight mm -hmm. f5, knight f5 is a good move because if he takes on f5, then the E-pawn falls. Uh, so it's yes. a good way to defend that pawn. Mm -hmm. So what is black going to do about it? Is it going to just uh, let the knight sit there and just uh, play a solid move? Yeah, maybe he taking gonna... h7 or something like that. Uh, prepare g6. Um, what about rerouting the knight to uh, to c4? I know it's a stretch, but like knight yeah, c8. That's, a, b6. that's an interesting plan. That makes, it makes sense. Knight c8, knight b6. I like it. Well, the thing is, I had this idea for white earlier with knight d2, knight b3, knight c5. So. Yeah, so you're being consistent. <laughs> yes. No, but um, that, that, I like that move, actually. Okay, so he goes, he reroutes it the other way. I didn't love that square, because after g3, um, I don't know where that knight is going to go. You know, of course, it's a natural square, but but it doesn't, uh, I don't think it does anything. And it, I don't love leaving the knight on f5 uh, there forever. You know, it's a good square. So I didn't, yes. I'm not a fan of knight g6. You would have preferred uh, knight c8 or like anything. Maneuver, to... Yeah, or even king h7, like I had said before with g6. Mm -hmm. So king h7, do you think he's preparing g6 at some point just to kick yeah, maybe the knight? He's gonna, maybe he's going to reroute the knight now, like play knight f8, you know, or knight f8, knight d7, knight b6. <laughs> But now he's got to watch his, his uh, b5 pawn. Of course, the, the, that's the idea of queen e2. Yes. Um, I think now the position is a little more pleasant for white. He's, he's, you know, he's got knight b3, knight c5 maybe. He's um, going for it. He's going for this plan. Uh, while now, uh, black had a knight on g6. What does he do on rook takes b5? Because uh, the, tactics, the tactics on f5 won't work because the rook on e8 is going to hang. Um, so... Mm. Unless he can play, and knight e4 right now, maybe, is there knight g7? It gets a little crazy. Yes. Uh, Rook b8 first. Yeah, now knight g7. g7. Okay. And it's going to be a better end game at least. If knight takes g3, you can either take on g3, or you can even play knight e6, then take on e2, and you'll basically be up a pawn. Um, so knight, knight g3 is pretty much forced, but yeah. then you have an ugly pawn structure. Oh, take, so is way. this that's, a clean pawn? Well, that's a clean pawn. Ooh, what is this? Why did he Rook take on e5? e5. I don't Rook e5, wow, with knight e4, you can't play f6? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's so a surprising, I don't know if that was a voluntary exchange sacrifice or if it wasn't one of these like kind of pre-move situations. <laughs> Because I don't really so, understand why. Like, I mean, it's not terrible. I just don't know why he would go for that. Now, queen one takes c3 was possible. But it, actually, this threatens rook e1 check. That's really difficult. Now, rook e1 probably? So, this could be just losing. Queen c8, king h7, no more checks? Yeah, this is bad. bad wow, move. what a swindle. It's not totally... You still got to checkmate him somehow. Queen g5 and then take on g4. It's, it's going to be... Well, actually, you can't take on g4. Sorry. That, that's defended. It's a good thing I'm not playing, right? Um, Wait. White is going for it. White didn't repeat. Oh, but now this rook g4. So king f4. Weird. So Oh, he's got knight f6. Wow. <laughs> wow. And no checks. And if you look look at Duda's checks. face. Look at Duda's face. He's like... He, wow, he's got, this is he's crazy. He's got the smile and the... Yes. Oh, my goodness. That was, that was an incredible swindle. Oh, wow, that was crazy. Now, look, now, uh, Eric Krishna starts so fast. If I were him, I would have, like, taken a deep breath. You know, maybe this this would have been a good time to request a bathroom break. Yes. I, I don't know what are the rules in the contract. Do I'm you? Not, uh... I'm actually not, I'm not sure because I wasn't involved with the contract, obviously. But, uh, yes. you know, in tennis, in tennis now, I don't, do you watch tennis? I love tennis, yes. You, you yeah, have a certain amount be, of time, right? It used to be, like, often, it wasn't very often that people would take a bathroom break. But now, like... Every set, it seems like the loser takes a bathroom break. Yes. So, I don't know. I don't know how our contract looks compared to the ATP, but uh, <laughs> there should be a clause of, uh, you know, when you're in tilt, you can uh, have a few breaks to uh, do whatever you want to regain your composure. So we have a we have a position here. Um, I guess, you know, it, it, on the face of it, it looks like. The pawn structure is favorable for black, but they're a little passive and it's hard to develop. So now, um, you know, after b6, knight d6, he gets the bishop pair. 
I think yes. it's probably better. It's probably a better position for White. They definitely have uh, more active pieces here. So it takes, takes, but is it anything? Can I just play King C7? Are yeah, you going to bishop and F4? Rook e1, I guess. I was thinking about bishop F4, E5, rook takes C6 with bishop E5, bishop G7. Yeah, they, I don't yeah that stuff is, that's possible too. Yeah. I mean, it's risky though, because the, the rook will just infiltrate yeah, on D2. Yeah, the to D2, it's not so clear. But you know what we know is going to happen is that Jan Christophe is going to take two minutes here. <laughs> to think about it. Yeah. Uh, but King C7 is a very natural move. You're defending what? C6. Yeah. Okay, so he goes Knight E5. So he wants Knight C4. But yeah, B3 yeah. is a solid move. Hare Krishna, you just play so fast, you know? Now, can, uh, you try, so... can you try... Oh, sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I'm just saying in the chat, someone says that we are uh, not equal in terms of uh, voice volumes. I don't know if it's uh, uh, is it, me is or it you. Probably mine is less loud. Let me see. I don't know. People should uh, tell us in the chat. I don't know if it's in the settings. I don't know if I should uh, increase or decrease my uh, my mic. I tried to increase mine. Let me know if I'm louder now. This, is, this has happened to me before that I'm less loud. Okay. Um, so let me I mean, know. I hear you well, but uh, Lafong is louder. Okay. I'll, so I'll try to turn. I'm turning you down a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You can turn my mic down, or yeah. I should. Because uh... I don't know how. I think I'm. I'm mic'd uh, about as. I can also bring my microphone a little closer. We'll see if that makes it better. Let me know. Okay. Uh, let me know in the chat if I'm. Uh, if I'm too loud now, maybe I. You know, it's. It's possible to overcompensate. Overcompensation is something uh. that people talk about a lot. Okay. So people are saying that I should turn it a little down. So I'm too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I actually tried to turn you down now. We'll see if maybe just keep talking and see if it gets better in a few seconds. Cause... Oh, so some other people are saying Pascal needs uh, turning up rather than Lafong turning down. So we have different opinions here. Some people like but, uh, you, some people like me. Yeah, yeah. This is a this could be this could be a big debate. So what's going I'm on? In, what's going on in the position? I think I think Black is okay. Um, so maybe his ninety five plan worked out although he's got to be careful still right yeah so bishop pair double pawns um king c7 okay yeah, i like this seven, good move because i yeah Rook you know, has if, to go if white could play white could play f4 but it's not you know the problem is f4 is going to be met by knight g4 and i think black is going to be in time to kind of have everything uh protected I mean, I'm, I'm going to go bishop c6, just trade yeah. this uh, bishop. All, all my pawns under king star are in dark square, so maybe the bishop is not doing that great on e3. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, white's got to think about, yeah, so he plays f4. That's a move to try to bail out into opposite colored bishops. Mm -hmm. um, but he's not going to let him. So knight g4 here? Yeah. And okay, it's, well, it's, I mean, uh, if I... If I trade everything, the, the rook endgame is definitely not worse for black because of the... No, no, yeah, the, the rook endgame. Here, actually, I mean, I suspect he's going to play the rook endgame. Now he's got gf, gf, rook, g8. That might be winning. Oh, but... G, gf, bishop takes, no? No, gf, bishop takes, There's the rook hangs. Rook g3? Or is the king, is the king yeah, and pawn and winning? Yeah, the king, you're going to get a pass pawn with f6, e5. I mean, I would think that's going to be winning for black. Yes. So I think GF, GF, Rook G8, Rook G3 takes, takes, Bishop G2. That's really nice. Yeah. Since creating a passed pawn, right? Yeah. Just then King D6 and then E5 or, or yeah. F6, E5, I guess. Or even start with King D5 maybe. I don't know. You have to play precisely. I might botch it up, but <laughs> but I think it's <laughs> winning. King, Can King I King D5, G4? Then, then, then he plays King E3 to play C4. But it's good. It's, it's got to be winning because you can eventually you'll create a pass pawn. You can play f5 and then e5 on the next move. Yes. I mean, it should be winning because the majority. I mean, if... Okay, c4. Interesting. I don't know if I love c4 because now if he just sits. C4 g g4. Well, can I just play g4 with the idea of playing f5? Maybe. If you go maybe. Because you can never take. That's the problem. Wow. Yeah, this is I mean, really maybe it's a good move. But maybe it's a good move. So C4. 
And this is a really good moment to think because any move could change the whole yeah, course of the game. Pawn endings, pawn endings can be really uh, can be really tough. So um, I have to shuffle. I have to play king e3. I don't see any other good moves. Yeah. So now he's just going to play a6 b5. This uh, he's actually played maybe very well. Um, and then next move he can play. Well, next move in the next few moves he can play f6 e5. But he's still got yeah. to figure out how to actually make progress. It's really nice that all the black pawns with three pawns, I'm controlling four pawns. Yeah. And I kind of create a wall on the queen side to make sure that I'm not getting any pass pawn. And then black is trying to create a pass pawn on the king side. He's got to. One thing he's got to be careful about is that if he creates, if he, you know, he can't start running with the king to the king side so easily as black because then, you know, white will have time to play king d4 and somehow threaten to take on c4. So um, I think I would rather have a pass pawn with f than e. Yeah, so now so I was wondering, so if, e he plays, if he plays king f3, I don't think it's so trivial to win. So could I could I even sack a pawn, like takes, takes, and f4 check, and then I run h, and when we yeah, trade f... Yeah, so that would be, that might, that might work here, yeah. To, to but, just have a nice outside pass pawn, and yeah, to, uh, f4, to run my king to the queen side. Like, F4 does look convincing. Yeah. F4 looks good here. Takes king F5 and just H4. And, now, and I don't see how... how uh... You know, the tables have turned quite a bit because it looked like uh, Hare Krishna was invincible and then he just got tricked in the last game. And now yeah. Duda is about to take the lead uh, with actually a very nicely played endgame, we got to say. For now, sure. For sure. Yeah, actually, this is... So this is completely, completely over here. Um... It's not a, not a fair race. I'm happy about uh, my idea. My idea of uh, creating a yeah, pass, that's a, that pass pawn a... being played, the outside pass pawn here. Yeah, and now he's just getting all the pawns, and yeah. he's gonna win this. So nice game. Yeah, just a nice game by Jan Christoph, who takes the lead now, three to two. And so now, um, um, now the pressure, the pressure is on Hare Krishna to to come back. For sure. And they play another Torre attack. Yes. The, so uh, back to the game one. The, you know, my when my dad started playing chess, he was always playing the Torre attack, actually. So I know it extremely well. Maybe uh, it has to do with one of our first teachers. Yeah, maybe, actually. This, right? Yeah, yes. we had the same. This is a, a fact that maybe nobody cares about in the, in the chat, but we had the same <laughs> coach for a while. No, 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 no. I think some, some people are interested in the... Uh, our childhood and how we got to play chess, our whole friendship That's and true. stuff. That's sharing. True. So we both we both grew up in Montreal. You're still you're still in Montreal. What I'm what area Montreal. actually? What area of Montreal do you live in? Um. So you know the orange julep. Do you remember this big building, the Orange Bowl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, right, right next to it. Okay. So I would say uh, on the the Carry Highway. Close to the Namur Metro Station. If okay. uh, anyone is familiar with yeah, Montreal, for for everyone who knows Montreal, a, gr a great place to go to when you're able to travel. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. So it was interesting in this position. I kept thinking that at some point White was going to take on f6 and double the pawns, but he ended up just waiting until the bishop got to e7. Mm -hmm. um, and now he might play for a structure with f4 at some point. I don't know. Uh, but I don't love actually how White played this because now now he's got to deal with C takes D4 uh, stuff. And yeah, so F4 might be a little uh, overextending here. Yeah, and so it's not easy. No, I mean he's and he can't play his queen off the file. I mean C takes D4 is not a huge threat yet, I guess, because you could play just C takes D4 and mm -hmm. the knight is pinned. But you know then you could play castles, for example. Like CD, CD, castles, and that could be annoying. I don't know how you get out of the queen. So, yeah. But at and some point, at maybe he can take, he could play maybe knight takes g6, pawn takes g6, and like queen b1. Maybe that's what he's going to do. Well, that was my question, actually. I was wondering if it's dangerous to take the bishop while black hasn't castled yet. Are there any dangers in terms of uh, black attacking kingside? Yeah, I mean. I don't think I don't think it's really danger, but I think it's it's a uh, it's definitely a like black is probably not gonna castle, um, but I don't know if it's dangerous. You know, maybe you can play it just h three. Mm -hmm. So now maybe you know cd 
ed knight takes d4 was a threat so he moves uh he moves d takes d5 i mean if the position keeps opening up black will have to castle eventually if i can yeah, get a pop break this is a very comfortable position for black right like if he plays h3 knight to e4 is kind of annoying um yeah the bishop doesn't have i mean he probably has to play bishop f4 and just play that position but this is definitely i mean i think this is a very comfortable position for black yeah 94 incoming it's hard to deal with that um bishop takes f6 doesn't look right no but at the same time bishop f4 maybe even e5 here and just knight e4 and the pawns yeah. are rolling i don't think i would take the bishop as black as black here i think i would just push the the pawn well he decided to take it and uh oh, he did take it okay so he's going yeah. for the positional approach yeah i mean i guess this is a normal ish structure some usually black gets this kind of structure instead of white but it's uh yeah, so can I can I get dark square control as uh, as white here? Can I get my rooks to e1 and d1 and play something like knight e5? Am I in time? Yeah. I mean, it, just... it still seems like a, it still seems like white is is okay. I guess it's not uh, it's not a disaster for white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so he's gonna play now. He, he wants to play rook f e1. Probably, like you said, put a knight on e5. So b5. Am I going for knight a5, knight c4 plan? Just be careful to not hang a piece, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, once the knight moves, then white gets the knight to d4. They'll put the queen on e2. Uh, maybe the knight will be kicked with b3. So it's, I think it's it's still okay for still okay for white. Am I trying to do a5, b4 to try to... Uh... It, it's not easy to come up with something here as, as black. And no, a6 yeah. has... Yeah. I agree. It's not it's not so easy, but I think maybe he'll he's trying to prepare either b4 or d4. But it's not it's not easy to achieve any of these uh, pawn breaks. So, but I think uh, sometimes these positions end up being uh, difficult for both sides to really do anything. You know, White still has a few useful like rookie one g3 king g2 like sort of useful semi obvious moves to play, mm -hmm. um, which like if it were me. I'd be playing. I'd be playing like g3, king g2, long before. Oh, and there you go. So he goes for a crazy tactic. Wow. So, but maybe. Does it work? Knight g5. I like that. So now knight e5 looks very strong. He's threatening two mates. Knight g6. Wow. And queen f7. Yes. So this actually mm -hmm. looks like it just wins. Uh, but I don't know if he could have played king h7 or king h8, because I don't know then if there was a mate knight, there. Knight g5. Uh... Yeah, I mean, because this this I think is just gone now. I think it's over. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's over. Line. So wow, big this blunder is... by Harry Krishna here. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that was not an entirely clear. Uh... So Harry Krishna shaking Maybe. his head a little bit. Duda must be uh, feeling on top of the world after a for match sure. that started, you know, in a really difficult way for him. Now mm -hmm. he's just, uh, you know, he's just completely turned the table, and uh, yeah, surprising. So we got a Trumpowski. A Trumpowski, yeah. We got the whole range of uh, <laughs> bishop openings, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Nothing, nothing theoretical, well, or at least nothing like mainline, but yes. uh, but all sorts of. Uh, and yesterday there was a player, uh, Timo Feyev, who's a very good blitz player, was playing d4, d5, bishop g5. He yeah. played that a couple times, and he played d4, d5, bishop f4, I think once. The more yes. London. Duda even has time to look around. Maybe he's reading chat while uh, he's playing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's in the contract that you're not supposed to do that, you know, okay. or listen to us, you know, which of course would be extremely helpful for him. So um, I'm not sure it would be that helpful if he listened to me. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I was, I was joking, but uh, so this was, this was actually unusual. He spent a very long time before playing C3 yes. uh, in a position that I think was quite normal. Uh, yes. Now you know. Oh, so he plays C D Queen D four. I was gonna say that G five was interesting, but that was before before C D. Do you think this is still book or this is a um, book? I think this is kind of improvised. Mm -hmm. But maybe maybe something like this. Is, I'm sure it's something like this has probably been played, but 
but I'm not sure that they're, you know, I, I, I wouldn't think that they're in their opening theory here. Interesting maybe to just play g6, bishop g7 for black. Okay, he goes g5. So Well, g5, h5? Yeah, I mean, which queen d1, yeah, I mean, it's tempting. That, that, that's an issue here because uh, in those positions, you, you play f3, then I, wow. Can I, uh, can I just take and queen d6 and just try to attack your... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely oh. the... Oh, so he plays h4. Actually, interesting. Good this move. This is really nice. Um, wow. Not an easy... This is going to be a tough position for black, I think. Now, for just sure. knight f2 and then e5 or e6 and bishop c5. I mean, this looks pretty pretty difficult. I don't know if I like queen b6. I think e6 with bishop c5 might have been a little more uh, precise. Yeah, the issue here is black. with black, you don't want to trade queens. You want to keep yeah. attacking the king. I mean, you, so... trade, you trade queen, you got a nice end game, but it's, uh, of course, that's not what he wanted, you know. I mean, he had a mm -hmm. position that was, that looked like uh, it could be crushing. Yeah. I mean, now I think black is going to survive. Just bishop b5, knight e2, knight d2, knight b3. I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, if the bishop comes to c5 at some point, you can play b4 probably. I mean, it's not yes. it's not losing for for white. It's not maybe great, but no, this is the kind of game where if you end up losing as black, is really frustrating. <laughs> so, oh, for sure. I, I still prefer black for sure. Yeah, no, no, I'm, black black is still black is still better. It's just not as much better as it was. Yeah. Um, it's actually still really good, right? Like bishop e6, and he's got a very pleasant position. Yeah, and he's letting his uh, his bishop hang here. He's not afraid of, uh, of the trade. He's going to improve his pawn structure yeah, if uh, White decides to take. Then he's got he's got an impressive, you know, he can get the... I know you used to play the four pawns attack. Like, he could have the g5, f5, e5, d5. That's a five pawn attack right there. That's Yeah, that's it's going to be a five pawn attack, yeah. Maybe a six pawn attack if uh, White decides to trade on the c5. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're close to a seven pawn attack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the four pawns attack, of course, align against the uh, King's Indian. Yes. Oh, people know about it. Anyone who watches my Bender Blitz, they have a, at yeah, least yeah, a four, yeah. one four pounds this, attack at stream. This has been your specialty since you were like seven years old. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to have to switch it up eventually, though, because uh, you can't always play uh, the same openings. And this is, uh, this is a goal of mine, actually. I've been studying chess a little bit uh, recently, and I really need to change my openings up. So it's, it's kind of a good question here. Does he want to play f4? Does he want to play... There's a lot of tempting possibilities f4 forces like the knight takes c5 uh, mm -hmm. cha uh, exchange it looks good yes. because then you're going to have a pass d pawn eventually so yeah okay. so he goes for it um yeah i mean this is still an ugly position for white i swear if he plays b5 it's going to be really yeah, really the, the, nice that's the seven pawn attack uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really a nice position for black yeah i love it so now All right. Yeah. Of course. GF, yes. Keeping your pawns together and opening up the G file. Yeah. And uh, so now, I'm going to go for rook G8 and just pressure the, yeah, the G2. Yeah, considering different, maybe it's maybe it's a good time also to try to move the knight, like knight A5, C4, E3. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a lot of different plans. It, it's a really unpleasant position for, really unpleasant. And this would be a, a bad loss, right? Like if he lost, if white loses, that's 5-2. I mean, it's a tough score to come back from. Yeah, for sure. For um, sure. So rook f8, is he trying to go for e4 or something? Why is he defending f4? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what that... I think he. I think it's prophylactic. Maybe he wants to stop g3, but I'm not sure. Or he wants sure. h3 to open up the f file? Maybe. I'm curious to see what, what's his plan. So king d6 with h3 maybe. Okay, so now... now, this guy now just, okay. he, he plays g3 anyway. So now, what if you played F G H G Bishop G four? That looks good to me. Yes, and F four, I just take your knight. Yeah, exactly. Take the knight, and then there's like H G and stuff's coming. I think that's pretty bad. Bishop G four looks very strong. He might have to play Rook takes H four there. Um. Yeah, but then I just trade just rooks. Take and take an F three, and then the E and D pawn. The the few pawns remaining will probably be pretty strong, but he's yeah. got to try rook h4, I think. Otherwise, otherwise, I think it's really bad. I think Duda's got this. I mean, I don't see how White survives here. 
it looks so tough. Actually, you know, we have maybe even stronger rook takes f3. Like on rook h4, maybe rook takes f3 is even stronger. Yeah. Takes, okay, takes. takes that way. I mean, it, I'm sure Bishop that was good too. And then yeah, King I mean, has the, pawn, the, pawns, the pawns are just going to be rolling. can play. Yeah. E4, knight, E5? Yeah, I like that. And rook g8 check. I mean, yeah, the king is not even safe. Maybe now rook g8 to start since the king... Yeah, now King has to go there. King has almost made it. Ninety-five. Almost, yeah. Yeah, it's almost right. Rook G. I mean, you can play Rook G four. Is the King coming? Uh, coming I, in. I, like I mean, that's four crazy. Because... Now D four. Yeah. Now it's just now Rook G two. Oh yeah, pawns are rolling. The pawns are rolling. I mean, it's. I guess it's still <laughs> still got to be a little careful. Okay, E three first. Probably a good move because he, the Knight is really bad. Yeah. But it's still, this there's not a lot of material left, so you never know, I guess. Could get simplified. Now, maybe well, just... what I don't want here is to allow white to get two pawns for a piece. Yeah, this is over. Oh, D2. Yeah. This is yeah. over. He gets it. Yeah. So is it 5 2 now? 5 2, yeah. That's tough. That's tough. To come back from this. Yeah, especially he from where he especially from where he started. Like he was rolling at the beginning. There was that one game was a turning point, like where he could have won, I think, and instead he lost. And I think that was really that really kind of changed everything. Um, so. And Hare Krishna had a bad opening in the last game, uh, and this is the best he could have gotten, right? He traded queens, but he could have uh, could have been worse. Yeah. Even. So now we have a a Torre attack again. Uh huh. This is the. Uh, it's the, the opening of the future, clearly. <laughs> or the past. Yeah. Okay, we've got it right here. Okay. No, last game was uh, one of uh, Duda's best game in this match, I would say. Yeah, I, I agree. That was really nice. So it's 5-2 right now. So how, how do you find doing commentary on a blitz match? I mean, doing commentary on a blitz match, I haven't done too often. I've done a lot of commentary, but not on blitz matches usually. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you can't uh, go for too long. Uh, oh, so in have, a certain... By the way, just stopping here, does he have pawn takes e4 here and then pawn takes d4? I guess there's knight e5. Knight e5 and uh, knight c6 if you take on d4. Yeah, so I guess he just plays like this. Mm -hmm. so, um. I guess Duda can even start thinking about just playing solidly, right? Like, because um, he can he can coast. He could make if he makes three draws, you know, that's a that wins the match. So he doesn't have to win uh, a lot yeah. more games here. So he that's can, true. He can take uh, he can let Hare Krishna take chances. Mm -hmm. Although I, I've always found actually that to be really difficult. Like playing when I'm okay with a draw, I often play really badly. I mean. I'm sure Duda is a very confident guy. He's a young player, so yeah. I'm pretty sure he's uh, he's just going to play chess and see what happens. Obviously, if there's a position in which he has an option to sack a piece versus just playing normal, then he might reconsider. But uh, in a position like this, I think just playing normal chess is the best strategy. Yep. Well, we can't we can't say they have the most exciting game in this one. Um, they might uh, trade bishops here with bishop d3. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe he has to go oh f5 just f3 oh f5 I just go bishop f1 and your bishop might be trapped yeah, so. yeah that's true <laughs> yeah f5 too aggressive maybe well, I don't know how he can try to yeah e5 but that actually e5 that structure with pawn takes e5 rook d1 that is known to be a little bit better for white right like because uh, you don't well it's it's just equal but it's usually People say don't get into this because uh, the only side with a weakness is black, so yeah. which is the deep on, and so you mm -hmm. just put all the pieces. You've got the wrong. What do they call this? Like the is it the the alakine gun or something? You got to play like the the rook. Oh, with the triple. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So he's got it. He had it wrong yes. here with the queen on d3, but uh, but it, this still is a position that is not particularly fun. And I think the issue here for black is that uh, you don't have any minor pieces to attack the king side, so it's not even yeah. an, an option to try to go rook g6 and stuff because uh, I feel white is very solid. Yeah. Yeah. He might try it. Still, it still is okay. Mm -hmm. But see now, now he's he was forced to play a. Well, he was forced. He played a5. Mm-hmm. 
So we'll see. He's going to swing the queen. Or um, what's his plan here? Maybe I don't just... know. He might just play. Queen b3, queen b5. All right. So he's he's trying to set up the gun. He's, he he's going play. for it. Rook d2, queen b1. <laughs> Rook d2, queen d1. He's setting up yes. the Alekhine gun. Yes. And once you have the gun, then you might be threatening at some point to play c4. I mean, it's not actually a threat. But um, okay. So he, he plays queen g5. So... And Hare Krishna, again, has to be thinking a little bit about trying to win. But now maybe just h4 is, is solid. And then, you know. Yeah. I mean, queen, rook g6 is always an option for black. And uh, they would be trying to create weaknesses. Like if I play rook d2, rook g6, f3, then you have something to attack. Now, h4, is he going to go for the uh, h4 and g3 pawn structure? Or is, is he just going to leave the pawn on h4 and uh, proceed with rook d2 and queen d1? Yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> hey, starts, I guess he can play g3 whenever he wants. So, all right. Yeah. So now g5. So now it gets. It's gonna he has get, to go for it. We're gonna get a. We're gonna get an exciting game out of it. But e4 is interesting. No, e4 rook g6 actually is okay. Yeah, I wanted to play rook g3, but the the rook on d2 is a problem. I like queen d1. You have queen yeah. f3 against rook g6, and yeah. you're. Uh, you have the h3 square potentially for your queen to hide. Yeah, and there's and there's already some tricks like rook g6, queen f3, rook f6. There's rook takes d5 there. So this this is starting to be risky. Now c4 possibly for, for white. Um, this is starting to be a risky position for, for black. Because c4, you know... Do I have e4? Queen maybe. takes yeah, queen h5? Yeah, c4 is interesting with rook g3 and queen h5. Yeah, that's interesting. Yes. He doesn't have to do it, but e4 looks good. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I'm liking uh, I'm liking White's position. Hmm. Okay, he a4 just does just... a move that doesn't do anything, which is actually maybe very strong because he's uh, he's saying what are you gonna do? But maybe Black can play h4, you know, without moving their pieces away. Mm -hmm. I'm hydrating and... in a few different ways here. I have coffee, sparkling water, and water. You got the whole. Uh... The whole it's actually, it's too hot. It's too hot. It's like, uh, it's something like almost 90 degrees, I think, outside. 30 uh, Celsius jealous. or so. Jealous of uh, the weather you have. I know. I, I, I shouldn't be complaining, but, but my office gets hot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now he's, he's playing queen e4. Interesting move on queen h5. He wants to play rook g6. Do I have queen But there's f3 there. Queen h5, rook g6, f3. Yeah, or, and then, or even queen h3, but you have king g7. And... Yeah, but f3 is just really good because queen takes f3, queen takes g6. So I don't know what the idea. F3 just wins, like, I mean, you won a pawn. Yeah. G3 is fine too. There's really no, there wasn't much point to the sacrifice. Um, is he trying to go king g7 and rook h8? But but I have rook d5 and queen e5 check trading the queens. Yeah, that's a good... Uh, Good point. So, so you can go king g7 here. I think black is probably... Yeah, this is busted, I'm pretty sure. Just ed, and then uh, if... Just ed with the idea of king g7, queen f3, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like ed. It frees the rook on the, yeah. on the third bank. This so now... Look. And on king g7, black... king g7, there's also queen e5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah if, if black queen... doesn't mate white here, it's done. Because uh, yeah. they're up two pawns. Yeah, and I don't, I don't really believe that that the white king is about to get checkmated. Um, yeah, this just looks gone pretty much. Check here. Rook he's gonna check. Okay, so rook. He's... Oh wow, that's really nice. Yeah, nice rook defense. Yeah, one. Yeah, and now just. Uh, oh, he's got to watch for queen h3. Yeah. Yeah. So king g one. Maybe rook. Uh, maybe rook h. King one, king oh, g two. Still a little, still a little bit tricky here. It's actually tricky with the flag, you know, maybe with the flag hanging, it's actually, uh, okay. So oh, wow. Play the brave, that's a brave move, but it's probably yeah. good. With something guarding H1, you're always safe in those yeah, structures. Yeah. This, as is, a... this is spoken like a true dragon player. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So now he's threatening. He's just, <laughs> he's really it's, it's not kind of scared. Amazing. Duda is just taking all the pawns with no, yeah. no fear, no fear at no all. Fear. B7, just ignoring completely the attack. The other guy has three pieces on the H file, still just sitting still and uh, pushing his B pawn. Yeah. At some point, they're going to get a queen against the two rooks ending again. 
Yeah. So they're going for the queen versus yeah. two rooks. <laughs> of course, white is uh, close to winning here. Rook d4, rook f4 is probably the simple plan here. And then you just want to double on the f file at some point. Exactly. That should be should be a losing... Because if you put like one rook on f3, then, uh, I mean, if you put the other rook on f3, sorry. So he's mm -hmm. just going to play rook b5 and rook f5. Yeah. And then... Uh, and then take on f7, it should be totally winning. I mean, the, the rook on f, f4 here is really the MVP in the position because it's defending f2 and a4, so all your weaknesses are covered, and the other rook area is just going to collect the pawns. Huh. So, he, interesting, he plays... Uh, so he's got to get out of the pin somehow, right? So it's, it's still... Somehow these positions are always harder to win than they look. Yeah. Um, oh, nice, nice little triangulation here. He's trying to force <laughs> the king... Uh, True. Maybe just king h2 or something. Okay, so he goes for it. I mean, that so should he, be... So he's not trying to win the a pawn or just to mate the king? Yeah. He's he trying mean, to set up mating that here. Yeah. So... Yeah, rook f4, four, king, king h2, seven, and now king he can, h2, just, take, he can just take the pawn. Oh, he didn't take. I'm surprised he didn't just take the pawn. He really wants to mate. Yeah. Okay, he's going to take the pawn, and this is pretty much over. I mean... Yeah, it should... I mean, it's... It's winning. It's just a question of actually winning. Of I mean, of winning the actual position. But of course, mm -hmm. two pawns. Two pawns is going to be. Uh, at some point, he's probably going to be able to play king h3 or something. But he's got. Of course, you always have to. Uh, you always have to work. Oh, so yeah. now there's might be some checks. Checks like the king is in trouble. Rook h4. Rook g4. And uh, you always have to watch out for those uh, stalemate tricks as well. If uh, the yeah. king isn't meaning that. So now. King f5, maybe king h3. I don't know. It's not. It's Re actually not. Rook e4. Okay. Oh, whoops. So now oh, there's wow. queen d5. Wow. Wow. Well, so 6 2, right? 6 2. Um, so now Duda just needs a draw to clinch. So. Yeah. And it, this this so is amazing. Tough. I mean, at, at the beginning of the match, it really looked like Hare Krishna was the dominant player, and then yeah. uh, totally went the other way. And I think Blitz is very. Uh, you get on a streak, right? Do you feel uh, you probably feel that way too? Like you can get hot or cold. For and, sure. Uh, this for went sure. from hot. This went from really hot to really cold actually pretty quickly for yeah. Hare Krishna in this match. And it doesn't it, really it, have to really... do with how good they are. You know, it's just. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just he. He had a couple of. Uh, he let things slip a little bit early on and went from, you know, a w winning position to losing in one move in one game. And, and I think that was just kind of the, the turning point. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, it is so important to be strong mentally. Uh, how to how do you deal with uh, two or three losses in a row in the, in the blitz match and uh, the tilt factor? Some, yeah. uh, even some of the best players in the world uh, can't even overcome tilt, you know? It's, uh, it's really part of the game here. Yep. Chess and poker, you got <laughs> to sure. keep your, for, especially for blitz, you know, because you don't have, you literally have three seconds, three seconds to recover from one game to the next. So yeah. that, that is, um, that is not easy to do. Knight okay, D5. so I'm D5, he sacked the knight. I guess he's got, it's not a, it's, it's like a pseudo, it's like a pseudo sacrifice. But what did he do on ED, ED, Queen E7? Uh, just D DC6 and the queen ah, is covered? Yeah, actually, that's fine. Although it's not much for white, right? Like queen D6, rook D6, and then pawn takes C6. And it's completely, it's equal and the bishop gets out. Yeah, I that should, doesn't, look like any, doesn't look like anything. Um, so I actually like your move. It was just lucky because I didn't see anything, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you thought you were winning a whole piece by playing uh, <laughs> queen E7. Okay. But why is he thinking here? Why do you think he's trying to figure out if he... Maybe he's greedy and he's trying to win the whole piece. Maybe he's trying to find a, a move knight e8. Yeah, there's moves. I mean, you could play knight e8 first and then take Queen on g5. E takes and does it change the situation? It doesn't really seem to change anything. I mean, as black here, match situation, if I get a draw, I clinch the match. But I actually, think it takes queen you know, seven. Is... I don't particularly like this plan for white because even if you played, even as black, if you play knight e8, queen like g3, 
And then d6, like, I think black is fine. The knight has to go back, and then knight f6. I mean, it's not... Right. So he decides to go for it. Knight e8 here, not queen e7. Okay. Okay. So queen has to pull back. Yeah, so queen, I guess queen g3, or queen f4 is possible too, but that allows queen f6. Mm -hmm. So I like the other way better, because you were forcing a queen trade. Yeah. I guess you're for sure. forcing a queen trade here too, so that's okay. So he... DC6. Yeah, I mean, now he gets the H file, but that doesn't change too much, I think. Just I would still play Queen G3, then Pawn takes C6. Can I just take on C6 here and not trade the Queens? Maybe, okay, but then, then White would he's keep the scary. Queens, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you could. It would have been. H6 it was playable. This looks okay for Black, I guess, right? Yeah. Just H6 on Bishop D3, and the Bishop will come to E6, and. It's a little awkward for a few moves, but maybe mm -hmm. White has a little something with knight e4, knight c5. I don't know. If I can get rid of my light square bishop as black, I think I'm fine. Yeah. It's just this uh, this piece who, which is a little bit awkward. Uh, I gotta find some squares for this maybe bishop. Maybe knight c7. Yeah. Oh, so he goes. I was thinking knight c7 with bishop b6. He bishop goes e6. knight f6. Uh He's actually, that, that's interesting. He just wants to play bishop f5, actually, and get it out that way. So maybe f3 and g4 for for white? I was thinking uh, to limit the activity of the black pieces. Huh, so now... Can I take and rook d8? Yeah, I guess he's he's thinking that he's got king f8 coming to e7. Uh, mm -hmm. Which He played it so fast. I know, I was, I was going to say the same thing, that like... Somehow he takes like a minute to play certain moves, but then he plays rookie eight. Like it's so obvious that he's got king e seven, which he's actually right, I think. So yes. But I I would not have moved. I would not have been able to make that move without like double checking, triple checking, you know. Yeah. So it takes maybe knight e four just to limit the the knight, so I cannot yeah. come back to f six. And, and maybe potentially knight c five. Yeah, and you're threatening knight g five also. Yes. So uh, if I have to place the move with h6, it's kind of annoying. Uh, h6, now rook d8 works because you have knight oh, d6. Because right. now you have right knight d6. But knight d6, king e7? Rook takes c8, and uh, then you win something. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yes. So, so, so he's got to do... He's got to make some go, kind of awkward move here. Can maybe, I go king f8, knight g5, f6, and just let you take h7? And maybe. Your knight might Maybe, although the knight is actually good because you can play rookie one check and then knight then knight f8, yeah. And that, yes. knight, that knight suddenly is actually pretty good. So Duda has to find some very precise move here. It's yeah, not that this, is not, this has turned out to be a... I think it might just be a bad position now. So um, was rookie 8 a mistake in allowing uh, white 90. to just trade rooks and play knight e4? Yeah, knight e4, very, uh, very, strong. very strong. Yes. Yeah, so now... Knight g5. Knight g5. Do I have to go f6? F6 seems like I mean, it's on plus. There's lost. probably other ways to give a pawn, I guess. Um, okay, maybe maybe throw in some b5 here. But b5, knight h7. Yeah, so he goes okay, to this. But now knight h7, king e7, rookie 1. The king has to go to like d8. Knight f8. It's, it doesn't look great. Okay, well, I'm... I'm actually secretly rooting for Hare Krishna here because I want the match to keep going. I agree, I agree. I mean, you have to root for the... Uh, the no matter who you like or don't like, you've got to root for a good match. So Yes, for sure. For sure. Now, King C7, I guess it still uh, still needs some technique, especially with these. this pawn majority is not the most uh, convincing pawn majority ever. Wow, what a brave move. Yeah. King E8. He makes these moves, he ma he makes these moves on E8 very fast. <laughs> So I I think I have to go bishop uh, c c8. The knight is not doing that great now. Oh, knight g6. Can I take and king f7? Yeah, I guess he's he's happy with the active rook on. The yeah, rook right? d7. Yeah. Rook d7 and the black rook is so passive. Yeah, this is a tough end game. Up a pawn plus that. For sure. And the king is actually pretty bad on on uh, on uh, yeah. on that square. So a5, so now, good move. He wants to try to play b5 and get some. Can I play rook c7 here just to limit your... Uh, yeah, that looks like a good move. Your, your play, and then I just bring my king. Okay, now can I... Well, it's really tough. It's yeah, so it's tough. Still a, it's going to be a tough tough end game. But maybe your move was better. Maybe rook c7 was better. Now, rook d6 followed by something like... Uh, 
just c4, c4, b5, c5, or king c3 is bringing the king. And he... Yeah, but I agree that maybe, well, actually, maybe that's good because now, now the king doesn't have a, a lot of, the, the black king doesn't have a lot of squares. Yeah, and whenever you play c5 check, I go king d5, and I just yeah. infiltrate. So now there's there's not much for black Four. to do. Mm -hmm. But now king e7, it's not... King. It's not still not trivial. These rook endings. B five now. B five A four. Wow, Duda has really ha, has really recovered from this. Yeah, it's, uh, now it's like impressive. his rook is active. His king is fine. Mm -hmm. It's not much for White now. He's just up a pawn, but there's not not a whole lot. Rook A eight. Yeah. Rook A eight. Rook E one, and I'm gonna get the G two pawn. So, oh, he's just gonna check here. Yeah, I get G one. So now we're going to have a race. This could actually get kind of fun. But I uh, like black here because f3 is really weak. <clears throat> so you have to go back to king king d3, just rook f2. Yeah, black, I mean, black is better. Why did you is black king... better? Oh, so he was trying to go he was trying to go rook d8, rook d3. So I think it's going to be well, Maybe if it's a just... draw, he loses a match. So yeah. Is he just going to Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Match, okay, or... a... He's got to he try. Oh right? yeah, now black black will probably take over. Um, yeah, just not. Well, this is a match situation. I mean, black yeah, might yeah, win this course. game. It's actually still, it's course. still unclear. The a pawn is pretty fast. Mm -hmm. uh, but you take on g4, play rook g1. Uh, I don't think black is worse. Interesting. So is he going him. for uh, king d6? King C, no, King C7, King C5. I don't, know why, I don't understand what he just did. I mean, I guess he's got Rook B1, Rook A1 as his idea. But that looked, yeah, but that now that looked a little weird. Box. King C7, King B8. Yeah, now, and now, now he's going to B6. Now he's passive, so I don't... He might still be okay, but it's... Yeah, maybe it's okay. Rook D5. Huh. Black is fine here. Takes. Yeah, he's holding. Seven. And now I can't trade rooks. Oh wow, rook b5, really nice. And he plays it really fast too. That's like a yes. Rook b5 is a really nice move because I'm still seven. guarding the, the pawn on uh, g5. Yeah, this is just. I mean, objectively, this is equal. He can yeah. take on a7 and just run. Yeah. Is it gonna right. Well, this was Very this was tall. a pretty wild, pretty wild match. Um, hey, uh, congratulations, John. It was really good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for the match. It's been very interesting. I, I don't know if you can hear. We we have sort of the yeah, yeah, a little bit of sound. The match? Yeah, I think that uh, coming here from uh, to be honest, I mean, from here. I have many shaky moments and I I can only hear your voice. You can't hear them at all. It's on it's no. on the Zoom call, but I don't know. Let me see if I can actually make the I I, I can try to make maybe the sound higher. Uh, let me see. Was a fork on F6. Are you usually doing any sort of interviews with a player or something? Can can you hear them now? No. Okay. Well, then I guess I guess we'll just we'll just end the stream because I, I, they're not saying much anyway. I can I can barely hear them myself. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. I, I guess I can I, I just want to show maybe really quickly. I'm I'm gonna show. Um, I'm gonna go back here and show show that what's happening in the next uh, in the next stage of uh, of here. So let me show you here. Um, actually, I went to the wrong I went to the wrong page here. Sorry. Um, okay, so here, I'll just show the cross table real quick. All right, so as you can see, um, I'll scroll to the right. Actually, I should just... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm showing it a little bit here, but it's not uh, it's not the best. Can you guys see it at all? Or I guess you can see it. So we have Peter Zvidler is going to play against David Anton uh, Guijaro, and Artemiev is going to play against Duda in the semifinal. Uh, I think it's going to be on Wednesday, but I, I got it. Or maybe it's tomorrow, and then the final will be Thursday. 
And then on Wednesday, of course, uh, everybody should tune in uh, to see Magnus Carlsen play against Firuja in the final of the Banter Blitz Cup, which should be uh, a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so thanks everybody for joining us. Lafong, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. That was fun. I was happy to do uh, do something with you today. A little, a uh, little different. Yeah, this, it's going to be, we have a lot of, and then we have the Magnus Carlsen Invitational, so uh, basically the top eight uh, players in the world are going to be playing, uh, you know, and it's going to be, it's going to be super exciting, and uh, so yeah, a lot going on in Chess 24, it's, we're almost lucky to be uh, stuck at home, uh, enjoying all the chess. So, thanks guys, and I'll, uh, I'll see you all very soon.